So today I wanted to talk about the art design philosophy of Stellar Blade and how it compares with the art philosophy of other games. And real quick, some of you guys have messaged me and asked me on my take on the whole censorship thing. And generally, I try not to talk about drama on this channel, but just to be perfectly transparent, as someone who's been following the project since before it got popular and is familiar with Shift Up's previous works, I think it's pretty clear that the original uncensored hard disk version of the game is the director's true intended version. My gut tells me that the reason he put the uncensored content on the hard copy is because he knew Sony would inevitably try and force changes to the game with patches later. So if I had to bet, I'd say Sony gave him an ultimatum and forced him to either censor the game and take the blame or have the entire project and team axed from Sony themselves. And like any normal leader, he chose to save his team, but he also knew the real product had already been physically shipped. So what's done is done. But that's just my theory. Feel free to agree or disagree in the comments. Now that we got that out the way, let's talk about the two most common art philosophies that I think most modern games fall into today. And disclaimer, I can't really go into this subject without also spoiling the game's content. So if you haven't played the game and you intend to play it later, turn back now. You have been warned. Okay, so normally we have the old school, traditional, and simplistic type style, and on the other hand, we have the more modern and fancy hyper detailed style. If I had to give examples of each, I would say Cloud is a great example of a traditional, simple, and iconic style. And for a new modern hyper detailed example, really we could use any colorful, extravagant character that you see in any modern RPG or VTuber character today. Now without any explanation, you can probably tell right off rip that these designs are coming from two completely different philosophies, and they are trying to accomplish two completely different tasks. The goal of the traditional philosophy is to be easy and simple to remember. Nothing in particular really grabs your attention here, but if anyone sees spiky blonde hair with the big sword and the black cargo pants, we all know there's really only one character it could be. Part of this style is because resources were much more difficult back then. So the devs often went in with the mentality of, we're not gonna be able to have any extra DLC. We're only gonna be able to have one skin for the character the entire game. So we gotta make sure it looks good. And we also have to make sure the game can actually render it without slowing down. That was the goal behind the traditional old school style. You consolidate all of your resources on a single design that the player can hopefully identify with for years to come. The new philosophy is the opposite approach. Most modern developers realize that the player's attention span is pretty small, and most of the best character and design ideas are pretty much already done. You will never be able to make a ball character that is more iconic and memorable than Kirby, or Jigglypuff, or Pac-Man. If you make a block character, you will always be outshined by Steve. If you make any sort of sword waifu, you will always be outshined by to be. So today's studios ask themselves a basic question. Okay, we're making a JRPG. Can we make our protagonist better than Cloud? And the obvious answer that their art team will say is definitely not. So instead of trying to compete in a losing battle, they instead take the opposite approach, which is not trying to make an iconic character that will last for years, and instead just try to grab the player's attention for a few months. See, as perfect as Cloud is, if you put his art next to a modern design, most people's eyes will naturally lean towards the modern design first. And artists do this by over-designing their characters with crazy colors, explosive accessories, giant special effects, and as much asymmetry as possible. This modern design is designed to take advantage of the three things the human brain is naturally evolved to pay attention to, which are color, light, and movement. For survival reasons, your brain likes those things, which is why when you see something move out of the corner of your eye, you look at it. When you see a bright light in the middle of a dark background, you look at it. When you see color in the middle of a monochrome background, you look at it. Most of the time, you can't help it. And that's what this new art style specifically tries to trigger. And that is why in most modern games, the character designs are just getting more and more hyper detailed, bright, colorful, and have special effects everywhere. Most modern RPGs know that nobody's gonna remember or care about these characters in 20 years down the line, like they do with Cloud or 2B. But that's not their goal. Their goal for this style is just to grab and keep your attention until the next DLC skin drops. They know it's impossible for your brain to actually remember what the hell it's looking at. Like, if you just compare Tifa's design to any modern RPG or VTuber character, 
Like, what the fuck am I supposed to be looking at here? What is going on? Where is the character? Like, personally, I vastly prefer a design like 2B over a character like Navia. I think Navia looks really cool, but for my personal taste, the simple black dress with very slight details is just more attractive to me than the over-designed, super hyper-detail-oriented stuff we see in a lot of Genshin Impact stuff. That being said, I understand that characters like this are still very difficult to create. They take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of planning, and I don't think it's fair for me to just dismiss it as generic or lazy when there's obviously a lot of artistic skill that goes into over-designing a character correctly. Also, it seems that most people today prefer characters that are over-designed, which is why they're so popular. So I realize that I'm probably just an old man now, stuck in the past when designs were more iconic and simple. And I'm okay with that. So if we now apply these perspectives to Stellar Blade, the artistic design philosophy here is actually a little interesting. You would think it would be super modern, but it's actually quite simple and tame in compared to most of the stuff we see today. It's kind of like a happy middle ground between the two styles. On one hand, there are key shapes, features, and colors that are very easy to identify. From far away, if we see the long dark ponytail with the green skin tight bodysuit, most of us can easily identify that's probably Eve. However, if you take a deeper look, you can see that there's a lot of little subtle details that most traditional design characters don't have. There's transparent scarfs, serial numbers, barcodes, lights, and physics-based movement all over the hair and clothing. So from what I can see, Eve is not necessarily trying to be iconic, but she is trying to be recognizable. And to that, I think she more or less succeeds. Something else that I think is worth mentioning is in Stellar Blade, the devs give player access to all the other outfits without DLC. So anyone who preferred the more simplistic, iconic type outfits, you have the option to just pick one. My personal favorite is Sky Ace, but I have to admit, when compared to a lot of other more popular designs today, most players would probably think it looks extremely bland. But again, it's kind of my personal taste. And that's why players get to choose whatever they like the most. So when people say things like, Tubi is much better designed than Eve, personally, yeah, I agree with you. I personally also like the simple, iconic approach of 2B. However, I also think it's important to give credit where credit is due when a game provides a complete, solid, and enjoyable experience. See, the game is not aimed at people who only play games that are better than Nier Automata. The game is aimed at people who just want to play a beautiful, fun game. But what makes it special is it goes above and beyond to try and deliver that experience, because they could have just dumped all of their attention into Eve and called it a day, and it probably probably still would have been fun, but they didn't. They gave every single character and enemy a unique feel with a unique design and absolutely f***ing amazing animations. I'll talk about those in a later video, but for now, if you want to say 2B is better designed than Eve, sure. But by that same logic, I would also say the average enemy in Stellar Blade looks and moves a lot cooler than the average enemy in Nier Automata. And I think that's actually where the artistic design of these two games starts to diverge the most. Nier Automata's enemies' designs are much more chunky and brutalist in style. However, Stellar Blade's art style is much more cyberpunk, horror, and mythological. Stellar Blade's enemies kind of feel like Dark Souls enemies, and that's awesome. And what's even more cool is anyone that's familiar with, with the stories of angels that you find in stuff like the Bible, there's a lot of really cool design choices made here that you don't really see in other games. Like, I'm not really a Christian or anything, but as an artist, I've always loved watching the art in the cathedrals and in the books. interpret what a fallen, biblically accurate angel kind of looks like. For example, their depiction of a seraphim, which is supposed to be a six-winged angel with eyes upon eyes upon eyes. But when angels are fallen, they lose half their wings. So you can see what that looks like when we have a fallen seraphim taking over an entire space station. <sighs> That's... the real Alpha. Like, holy shit, that is an awesome interpretation that most of us probably have never seen before. My personal favorite was their interpretation of a fallen kind of archangel figure. Lily. Lily. 
Lily, I am sorry. Like, as a 3D artist, I can tell you nothing about this character design is generic. This design looks like it was taken right out of one of Peter Morbacher's Angelorium deck and fused with something from a Dark Souls demon. Like, do you have any idea how expensive it would be for me to pay someone to design 3D model, texture, UV, rig, and animate this character? Like, you can't just go to Fiverr and get someone to make a generic design like this. So I really don't agree when people just say uh, it's just another generic Korean game. It's like, no, it's really not. It's kind of unique, and it's got a lot of thought and design put into it. So I'm just saying credit where credit is due, guys. It's a different style with different kinds of enemies with a completely different mythology and different interpretation. So I hope that gives you guys some perspective on how the different art styles for each game are trying to lean and i hope you had fun so thanks for watching and as usual hope you have a fantastic day and i'll see you around <laughs>